Okay. When's the last time you heard someone mention a perspective control lens? Um, if you do any landscape, architecture, photography. Also, it's good for uh, product and uh, um, close-up, especially specifically also, all basically all food photographers. I get a lot of questions from people that are food photographers. By the way, Fujifilm does not have a perspective control lens. I hope to God sometime in the near future Fujifilm does get a perspective control lens, but even for Nikon, there's like, you know, no insult to Fuji, but there's like a bazillion more Nikon cameras out there, and there's still their perspective control lens sales are incredibly small. I don't know if people know you know the endless things you could do with perspective control. This is a 28 millimeter 3.5. This is an old lens. By the way, even modern perspective control lenses are all manual focus. This lens is still current production even though it's basically been superseded by the $3,300 19 millimeter perspective control lens which I have tested and just found totally wonderful. That front element is so huge and bulbous and so dangerously out there. The stuff that you can do with it, incredible. The, uh, the m Most of the things I use for uh, shift features. Um, I actually unlock the knobs. You know, converging verticals. You uh, set your uh, camera on a tripod or do some time. By the way, perspective control lenses are natively, even the Canon ones, are natively insanely sharp. Here you go. I've got actually uh, 11 millimeters of movement. I see you can think you could see it here. Instead of actually sticking my camera on a tripod, I have an adapter on this for use in my Fujifilm, and tilting my camera up to get the architecture or uh, trees, for example, you know, with converging verticals. I mean, that's what you're going to do. Well, I want to get the top of the building. I want to get this. I'm going to tilt my camera up. You keep your camera parallel to the, pr the plane that you're uh, taking the shot, and then I'm going to raise my lens up, and it'll you'll immediately see without having converging verticals. Tilt feature for uh, changing and uh, adapting the perspective and uh, the depth of field for uh, food photography, product photography. It is really important to actually use these for corporate and business, like someone has a website of the inside of uh, their business. You're like, you're, I'm gonna take a picture that you mean. Any of this stuff, okay, up, down, left, right. Um, it just, it just looks like, what is it about this image, you know? It's really sharp and is well done in Lightroom and Photoshop. There's something that doesn't look like the real hardcore professional, uh, photos of like a business or a home or a building. It's like, oh my God, all the verticals are like, ee! like this, right? It's because the person that was doing that real hardcore professional architectural shot, indoor or outdoor, doesn't make any difference, was using a tilt shift lens. Um, <laughs> Another wonderful thing that you could do with it, instead of sitting your camera on a tripod, you want to do a panorama. It's like, okay, I'll take a shot here, a shot here, a shot over here. You know what your camera's doing? Right, instead of doing that, all you have to do is, uh, okay, take a shot over here, take a shot, and you flip the lens around. All of these actually have features on the bottom where you can actually flip the lens around 90 degrees typically on most of the perspective control lenses, and then you're not actually tilting the uh, focal plane much better looking panoramas. Everything looks nice. There's no converging verticals. There's a thousand and one things you could actually do. And of course, uh, there are a few instances where you could actually use the shift feature on a monopod. I mean, you have a decent exposure time and it's outdoors and you want to keep your uh, camera parallel for a, uh, a tilt feature, excuse me, a shift feature for capturing the top of the building without uh, converging verticals. You can keep it on a monopod and do that. But I mean, basically these lenses are necessitatively tripod lenses and they are all manual focus lenses. This is a great lens. It typically averages four hundred dollars. This lens is just sharp as piss. Um, use a twenty-two dollar converter. Use it on your Sony. A lot of people actually use this lens on their Sony. Sony shooters do use this lens. Incredibly sharp. Four hundred dollars. This lens, like I said, the twenty-four millimeter uh, PC uh, Nikkor 3.5 uh, D is all, they're all manual focus, including the newest ones. Um, for obvious reasons, if you actually knew how the internals uh, were to actually have the shift feature, the uh, tilt feature, and also the ability, and there's a switch right over here to let you actually turn the entire lens 90 degrees one way or the other, so you could actually induce a tilt and turn, and you're able to uh, do uh, additionally uh, shift and tilt, or a shift and, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, excuse me, 
Turn and shift or turn and tilt, excuse me, I've had way too much coffee today, uh, does not allow any of these cameras to obviously so have uh, autofocus control. Um, $2,200 new, they average about $1,600 uh, um, used. Uh, they are technical lenses and uh, it confuses the people actually need like a 30 minute course uh, with examples and uh, I hope to make a video like that uh, sometime soon. I, I've done a partial one. I did do a partial one a few months ago. We had a complete outdoor one when the weather gets better on uh, you know, the awesome nature of a tilt shift lens. But since they are tripod lenses and they are an manual focus lenses and they are for technical photography so to say, not necessarily, they are for outdoor landscape. Primarily, they're used uh, for architectural stuff, um, business, corporate, uh, meaning uh, like a website where I take uh, shots of uh, various uh, small businesses uh, for their website. That way, you can actually keep the interiors looking professional. You can actually do this in Photoshop, but what you're doing is you're cropping out a lot. So you can actually uh, unconverge the verticals in Photoshop, but to do that means you're cropping out a bunch of the image and you're dropping a lot of megapixels. It's always better to do it in camera than in Photoshop. So someone's going to say, well, you know, you take out the verticals in Photoshop. It's like, yeah, now tell me what it takes to actually remove the verticals in Photoshop. To do that is cropping into the shot and you're throwing away all this excess at the corners. You don't want to have to do that. That's what these lenses are for. They're designed to pay for themselves. You don't have to be like some sort of working professional that's uh, using them for food photography or architectural or like a real estate, for every real estate. Yeah, but why there are a lot of professional real estate photographers out there that are actually not using a tilt shift lens and their pictures would look so much better if they used it. Why aren't they using it? Um, I know a really good real estate photographer is like, why don't you have a tilt shift lens? I don't want to mess with it. It's like, really? Really? Making a lot of money in real estate? I mean, I know the lens is expensive, but I mean, you're doing a lot of high-end real estate. Why don't you have a tilt shift lens? Um, it's a lens to consider, and it uh, does a lot of amazing things. Even if you just buy one for panoramas, you know, I take a shot. Okay, I'm going to screw it over here. Great, I got that. Um, you think, well, you're only moving it over 5 uh, millimeters one way or the other. It can't be that much, or specifically 11 millimeters uh, from uh, center before uh, shifting this lens, for example. It only has a shift feature on it. It has no tilt feature. It's actually substantial. You think, well, you're just moving up a little bit in the frame. It's like, no, you're moving way the hell up. Uh, important thing is to keep uh, the film plane parallel to what, the, what it is you're taking the shot thereof, like an architectural and a real estate photography. Slap it on the tripod. This is where a bubble level comes uh, in a grid. Go into electronic viewfinder on the Nikon, bring up the grid to line everything up. Take the shot parallel to where you want to be. Raise it up so you have no converging verticals. Wow. It's like, wow, this is what the really expensive indoor shots look like where I have no converging verticals. Um, and you don't have to edit it in Photoshop. And if you did edit it in Photoshop, you'd still be cutting off a lot of megapixels. So anyway, I think it's just the lens people should consider. A lot of you have no use in having a tilt shift lens. Other thing is a lot of people out there that would have use of a tilt shift lens. I know that for a fact that they just not even thought about it or considered it in any way, shape, or form, but they certainly should. I wish this lens wasn't so radically expensive. Um, this is my used copy of the 24mm uh, uh, 3.5D. I said it's still a current production lens, but this lens came out in 2008, I believe. It's a manual focus lens for $2,400. Um, um, what was I going to say? All right, I think I think I give you an example of the tilt feature. Here we go. Let me lock it in place over here. You got a locking screw for the tilt and the shift, so you could lock it in place. Here we go. I bring it center. It's a shift feature. Because these things tilt and shift, they are highly susceptible to dust. So keeping these lenses clean is harder and a uh, higher imperative. Uh, as an understatement, that's definitely so. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you've shown this informative. If not, then tell me how much you hate me and that I suck or something like that. Like, 
a lot of people love to do. <laughs> Goodbye.